another Monday night is upon us. And what an interesting period we are in. The greatest collection of information out there that I've ever seen. We had a period there for a few weeks where I didn't know what I was going to talk about. And this week I've got so much information that I haven't put it all in the webinar tonight because I figure finishing up at 9.30 at night is probably not an option. But it is what it is. We have lots and lots of information, some of it great, some of it a bit scary, but it's all going to impact everything that we do on a daily basis. And that's why we need to pay attention to it. We are having enormous, enormous impact on the precious metals market. And boy, that's just going to get <laughs> Martin. That is just too funny. <laughs> uh, we're having a great impact on the precious metals market and we're about to get even more impactful as we negotiate terms with regulators in various countries around the world for our coins to launch. So we're just moving along, doing what we do. And every single time we come up against a wall or something that most people would quit over, we find a way around it. And we have absolutely created an outcome for our members that I'm really proud of. So all we've got to do is get it all into the market and get these little blockchain developers and give them a bit of a whipping and get them going faster. But we are working on it. Let's get amongst this information. Here we are, 7th of March. I even remember to change the date on the slide this week. Sometimes that doesn't happen. But let's get amongst this. Everyone goes forward together. Don't forget it. Please don't forget it. Give us a yell. And yes, Martin, I just as I've said that, you sent me an email, asked me for some info a few days ago, and I clean forgot about it in among floods and everything else. I'll talk to you in the morning uh, and send you some info. Welcome, everybody. Let's get amongst this. Uh, Stephen, you're going to have to turn your sound down if you don't like the music.
there we go, folks. Quick run through on our little video. Bit of a run through, gives you an idea of what we're doing. If you're new and if you're not new, you need to pay attention because that's going to be changing probably monthly as we go forward. There's a lot of information coming that is going to impact all of us. And as Martin pointed out, pay attention to what's going on in Europe. Okay, we're expressing our view as affiliates only. We do not represent these companies. We simply give you the information we discover. That's not financial advice. We're letting you make your own decision. We have lots of stuff to talk through tonight. So our thoughts, prayers, and well wishes go to everyone in the Ukraine. I cannot believe what's going on there. It's just astounding that Putin thinks he can take over. Um, anyway, in my previous lives, I spent some time wearing a very attractive jungle green outfit stomping around in the bush, making sure that I knew how an SLR and an M60 worked. And I am forever grateful that that period of time was a very narrow window when nobody was shooting at us. Whole different ball game if you've got hot lead coming back at you. Anyway, we hope this war comes to a rapid closure. I'm not sure it will, but let's all hope that it does. So what now? And last but not least, I found this today. This is an internal recommendation to the Russian Central Bank because their economy is in free fall. They've been cut off basically from the international banking systems, so they can't uh, accept international payments through the SWIFT system, et cetera, et cetera. It gets worse and worse. So just have a look at this. The de-dollarization of our foreign exchange reserves, replacing the dollar, euro, and pound with gold. Gold. Yep, that is, as we've always talked about, gold, the one thing, maintains its buying power through thick and thin over thousands of years. Now let's have a look at who can supply gold at the moment. Let's have a look at Perth Mint. Bear in mind, Perth Mint is the largest LBMA gold refinery in the world. In the world. Every bar size that you can pick on their website is unavailable. Every single bar and gold coin they have on their website is unavailable. What does that tell you about the demand for physical gold? You can expect the premiums to start escalating now. It will get ugly. About a year ago when we first got started, there was a period where the premium in America was 90%. So you were buying metal at the spot price plus 90%. Let's have a look at silver. Who can supply silver at the moment? Gee, let's look at the Perth Mint just because they're the biggest in the world. Every size bar and coin is unavailable. Every single one. Hmm. Do you reckon right now that there are a lot of people buying physical metal? And yes, Martin, the spot price has gone up and it's at about 2000 now, US that is. I, I can't see how the price of metal can stay where it is. And we're gonna talk a little bit about that because you can expect these premiums to start to go up. And one of the things that I thought of researching this week. What exactly happens when countries go to war? 
as we're seeing now in the Ukraine. What happens with those munitions? I, I understand about ammonia and explosives and all that sort of stuff, but I'm looking at it from the metal perspective. How much silver do you reckon is in a cruise missile? Just silver. Does anyone know? Do you want to type it in the, in the chat window? That's a Raytheon-built Tomahawk cruise missile in the picture. Now, there's none of them getting slung about in the Ukraine at the moment, and I hope that they don't ever end up there because that would be an escalation of some size. Does anyone know how much silver is in a cruise missile? Don't see anybody typing. So I'm going to tell you, 15 kilos of silver in every cruise missile. And when that thing goes off, detonates, what do you think happens to the silver? It's vaporized. It becomes a, an atomic level fine disbursement in the atmosphere or in the ground or whatever you do with it, wherever the missile goes. 15 kilos. Now think about this. We're gonna to touch on a bit more about it. Couple that with a predicted shortfall, a deficit of 56.7 metric tons of silver this year. That's before the war started. The global market was going to be in the hole, 56.7 tons. What do you think is going to happen to the price? Where do you reckon it's going to go? We are in the right place. Once again, world events have brought us to this collective understanding that we are on the right path. It has been amazing. So France, let's talk about France. France has now decided to ramp up its nuclear power output. Now they were very big in nuclear power some years ago and they started to close that down because there was a lot of grief about nuclear power. There's been a couple of uh, small scale disasters and one big scale disaster, which coincidentally was in the Ukraine. But nuclear power is the safest, cleanest power on the planet, period. France has decided we're gonna be cut off from gas from Russia so we can't have gas-powered power generation systems. We're going to go back to building nuclear power systems. Personally, I think that's a good thing. No carbon going into the air. Yep, they've got to dispose of the byproduct, but if they start building uh, the right sort of nuclear power station, that's a very small issue because it eats its own byproduct. What about Germany? Hmm. Germany announced this week, this in the last week, that they would be reconsidering the building of more nuclear power plants and turning on the old ones because they can see that they're going to be cut off from Russian gas and oil. And does that mean anything about their carbon footprint? Well, yeah, it means they're going to be a lot smaller in the carbon footprint. And Nuclear plants, once they're built correctly, are a fair bit easier to run, particularly when you're negotiating with a madman on the other end of the pipeline. Well, I might as well say what I think. Gas supplies from Russia to the EU look like they're going to stop because that was the most recent threat that Mr. Putin made in amongst his ramblings about nuclear attacks and all sorts of things like that, he's going to cut off the Gazprom gas pipeline from the Soviet or from Russia into the EU. Wow, that means the EU is already in a energy deficit. How are they going to replace that? Well, even Australia is now shipping. LNG to Europe. Hmm, think about that. 
Yes, that's correct, Martin. The UK was, in fact, having significant energy shortages before this war started, and it will get worse, and it will spread. Russian cargoes are not being unloaded from freighters. They've already banned Russian ships from carrying freight into most other countries. But now the dock workers in Europe are refusing to unload vessels that have Russian cargo. Now, there's a whole big legal discussion going on around that about whether that's a legal stance to take, but I don't blame them. There's a war going on on their doorstep run by a madman who has a nuclear trigger. I'd be fairly worried about that as well if I was there. I just hope we don't get dragged into it. So what? All of this points towards more electrification. If there's more nuclear power plants in Europe, and I suspect as a result that America will probably go down that road as well. I used to live in Phoenix, Arizona, and just down the road was, I think, the biggest nuclear power station in America, Palo Verde. So I expect we're going to see a lot more electrification, and a lot more electrification means a lot more silver used in commercial applications, a lot more. There's about a kilo of silver in every electric car. There's 15 kilos in every Tomahawk missile. Think about that. Thus, there'll be more silver used commercially around the world to deal with this electrification. And do I have any inside knowledge about that? No, I'm just logically looking at what are they going to use? If they're getting more nuclear power into Europe, they will try and electrify as much as they can. And that would include vehicles. There's already been lots of regulations brought into play about where you can and cannot sell diesel or petrol powered cars from 2030. That's only eight years away. So electric vehicles are coming. Are they the best outcome? I don't know. In, a country, in a, an area like the European Union, where it's densely populated, probably not a bad idea. You could plug them in anywhere and charge them. Different entirely the situation in Australia where we drive for hours and think nothing of it. Do you have a bit of a problem charging your electric vehicle? So let's think about what that's going to do to inflation, shall we? Well, I was thinking about it yesterday and I got started on this inquiry road to see where we've been. And I've believed for quite some time that the government does not give us any idea of what's actually happening with inflation. Now, here's some information that I got from an Australian government website. Now, there's a graph of our inflation rate from January 21 to January 22. And you can see January 21, they were saying our inflation rate was 1.4% annual. Annual. And January this year it was 7.5. One year period. So in one year, their estimate has gone from 1.4 to 7.5. Get ready for this to get ugly because this is going to affect your life every single day. And remember, this does not include food or fuel. I'll say that again. This inflation calculation does not include food or fuel. Let's have a look at that. The average quarterly price of unleaded petrol in Australia in cents per litre. Have a look at that. That should get your attention because it certainly got mine. That's a one year period, January to December 21 or December to December. 
a one-year period. Have a look at the line on that graph. That's a 35% increase in the price of fuel in one year. Remember, they're still trying to tell you that inflation was between 1.4 and 7.5%. How come fuel went up 35%? How then in that year was our government telling us our inflation rate was 3.5%. One tenth of what happened with fuel. One tenth. I'm just staggered by the level of misinformation that we get from our government. We can have all sorts of debates about what happened with the COVID information and misinformation and who was right, who was wrong. I don't care. I just know that when I see something that comes from the government, I don't believe them. I go and look it up myself, research it. There's a classic example. Our supposed inflation rate was 3.5% and there's fuel, 35%. Tell me how that adds up. Let's have a look at the US. Just as a by the by, what's happening over there? Gee. The blue line is the wholesale price of fuel. The wholesale price of gasoline. How's that for a cliff that they've just run into? What do you think that's going to do to the US market? I hope that we see a localization of produce. I hope that's what we see because that's just, that's ridiculous. Nobody can survive that if you're a small business. Some years ago, uh, we had a, a fuel business uh, that we were putting uh, fuel saving systems onto long distance haulage trucks. And I had a conversation with a truck driver that was hauling produce from cans to Sydney. And then from Sydney, he would pick up produce for Woolworths and take it back to Cairns. And in the process of that, I was looking at how is that even possible? And he said, the scary thing is, he took an entire trailer load of watermelons to Sydney, dropped them off the markets, and then when he picked up his Woolworths produce to bring back to Cairns, one of the pallets on that truck was a pallet of watermelons that he had taken to Sydney. So those watermelons had gone from Cairns to Sydney and back again before anybody could buy one. And if you doubt how do they know it's the same pallet, when you use Shep Pallets, which Woolworths do. It's a giant international corporation. They track every pallet. They have an individual number. And yet the driver has to sign for them. So he knew exactly that that pallet went to Sydney on his truck and then was offloaded and reloaded and shipped back to Cairns. How are they going to sustain that when that's what's happening to fuel? And yes, iPhone, whoever you are, the US may increase its oil supply because it has the ability to do it. But that's a massive ramping up of output. It was all shut down when oil went below $50 a barrel because it was uneconomic. A lot of those wells are plugged. It's insane. It is absolutely insane when you think about what's going on in the world. Do I have the answer? Nope. I just hope that we get a bit sensible about how we freight product around the world. And yes, I hope the people in Europe and the Ukraine know a little bit more about how to stay alive than they appear to be demonstrating. So what now? Well, to prevent the disaster we see coming, I think you need a way to privately hold assets. And I mean privately. You need to have spendable assets because... I don't see this 
economic system that we have surviving. And yes, Martin, they can open up their shale oil fields again because now it would be profitable, but it will see how that transpires. Know how to protect your assets. I'm going to talk a little bit about that in a few minutes. But there is a whole lot of information going on out there because it doesn't matter what you do. It does not matter what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. You need to make sure you have what they call a side hustle, another income stream, a way that you can generate money that doesn't come from one source. Because if you are limited to one source of income, you are at the mercy of that source of income. And you don't want to go there. So in the coming weeks, we'll have a white paper out about our AU4U tokens and AG4U tokens. We are uh, working on that now. I did some more editing with feedback from the blockchain dudes on Saturday. Um, we've got to wait for approval from the government of uh, the UAE for them to give us regulatory approval to do what we're doing. Don't see it's an issue. Uh, they just want to see that we have systems in place. And the fact that we're using the blockchain that they have actually invested in, uh, I think we've got a green light all the way along. Everyone we've talked to loves the concept. We are building a 100% gold back stable coin. Now, we can't run this out of the US because the second we do that, we have a financial security instrument. And I'm just not prepared to go down that road of years of negotiations with the SEC to get that approval, even though I'm sure we can. I just don't want to wait that long. We'll see what happens. But we will have a roadmap that gives us physical metal that you can store in a vault and turn into cash. Or you can turn it into a digital asset that you can turn into a number in a wallet and spend it on your debit card. And you will also have in that system the ability to put cash in there as well. Now, first, one of these are underway in Europe now. And I hope that our main man, Boris, keeps us in the loop. I did threaten to tell his mother how awful he was. And he assured me that I couldn't because she doesn't speak English. So I used the dear old Google Translator and said, tell her I said this. There's more than one way to skin a cat. And old age and cunning will always defeat youth and exuberance. Just saying. So this card system is underway now in Europe. So people can pay into the system with euros directly onto the blockchain and spend it with their debit card. Boris is expecting his in the next few weeks and that he'll have it operational and working before the end of April. So we'll keep on his back about that. So is it spendable? Yes, it's a digital decentralized wallet. And you will have a virtual IBAN number for banking and it's in a secure private system. It's all based on coins and the blockchain. Now, we'll talk a little bit more about security in a couple of minutes. Notice of changes. The Woolies gift cards are still offline. Just thought I'd better bring that out. Yep, they're working on it. We'll have it back to you as soon as we can. But there are plastic Coles cards available if you want to buy groceries. You've got to organise that with Cassie. It takes a while for them to show up because they have to be delivered from Melbourne to us. Then we post them out to you. Not as easy to use as the Woolies ones. So how is this all coming together? We are going to use, in fact, some of us are already using the Zanique wallet. And that gives us a web interface to pay bills. We will shortly when we get a cash account in there and that's underway. Because Easy Shopping Cards has one of these wallets, you can shop with Easy Shopping Cards to buy your groceries and go and use that e-gift card 
at a Woolworths or, or we can't do it with Coles because they're a pain, but you can use a plastic card with Coles. You can pay with that wallet. Oils ain't oils. Talked to Dougie a couple of days ago and Jenny has set themselves up with a Zenek wallet. So you can use this wallet with your cryptocurrency to buy oil from Doug. I've just ordered some more from my car. So make sure you understand this links everything together. There is no direct contractual agreements between any of those three companies and Zanique with their wallet. It doesn't need to be. It is a way to pay for product that isn't in the banking system. Be aware it's not in the banking system, it's private. And so we're also going to be able to use it for the hubs and tokenization projects, all sorts of things, because it comes through that Zanique system. The technology belongs to Zanique. The marketing for that technology belongs to Sophia. The same as Gold Rocks looks after these webinars and does the training and education for people. It's a simple way to make it all work. So we're bringing this to you so you can control your own finances. It is an amazing way to do it. Think about the implications. What about the digitalization of everything? Well, we've used, used this slide a few times. Blockchain technology and tokenization will be a winner in the future. It is changing everything, and we'll talk about some numbers in just a couple of minutes. But it is changing everything that we do on the internet, absolutely and totally. I purchased some domains the other day. Uh, it's a domain process that runs on the blockchain, and you buy it once, and you never have to pay hosting again because you own the domain, and it's on the blockchain and they were cheap, they were like 20 bucks. It's a great way to do it. I've got no idea how to make that work yet. I'll get some spare time one of these days and figure it out. But blockchain technology and tokenization is gonna change everything we do. So let's look at the news that came out of a leaders meeting in Europe a little bit over a week ago. There's a new Zenic website coming, so they're adding in more information about the technology and a couple of other products that are coming. They're digital, they are blockchain products. If I knew what they were, I would tell you, but I don't. Uh, some of this information is still confidential and therefore they didn't even tell me. And I've, I've got no idea what the new products are, but they're telling me they'll be in the system very soon. The blockchain is listed already on GitHub. Now, for those of you that aren't up to your neck in blockchain, et cetera, et cetera, GitHub means nothing. But what it is, is a way that you can share your source code to programmers so that programmers that write code to talk to that always get access to the latest version. And this was built, GitHub was built, oh, I'm going to say five, six years ago, maybe more. I can't remember the exact time. And within about 10 months, it had exploded. And people like Bill Gates bought multi-million dollar chunks of equity in it. It is an amazing way that these three young kids created a way to share the source code and make sure that everyone was collaborating on the right version. So that is important because people that are in that industry, one of their first questions is, I looked on Git GitHub and couldn't see anything. Well, they still can't, but it is there and they are testing that everything synchronized when they uploaded. In the next few days, it will go public. So people that are in that space, in the blockchain space, they will be able to see it on the GitHub. The Zenek coin is going to be listed on two exchanges very soon. 
as soon as the GitHub process is open and public, the coins will be added to two ordin I'm going to say ordinary. I didn't. I couldn't come up with a better way to describe them. They are centralised exchanges. Now, do I think that's the best way to do it? Probably not, but it's the way everyone does it now. So centralised exchanges like CoinSpot, I don't know which exchanges they're going to use. I'm making these names up, but I use CoinSpot. I use Daxi, uh, Binance. There's a few of them. So what's the problem with that? Well, the problem is somebody controls them. They have the off button. And regularly, regularly, uh, we did a conversation a few weeks ago where we talked about the number of exchanges that disappeared last year, along with their assets. You've got to be very careful. Don't keep your assets on an exchange. If some idiot decides to turn off the switch, you don't want your assets on that exchange. So the good thing about that, though, is they'll be public and they'll be recognised and people will be able to see them and they'll be listed on CoinMarketCap, which is where everyone goes to see about the story of the coin or token. The white paper, it has been audited and approved. It will be published literally any day. I will be receiving a copy of it as soon as it's gone public. There's been whole bunch of edits and every time you send the edit back then because they're all working in German it gets converted into German and then converted back into English and it doesn't make any sense and anyway long story but it will be released any day the MasterCard debit card the first 2000 are in process in the EU uh, they are predicting that the first 2,000 will be shipped and in use before the end of April. So they're, I think I worked out that was about 25 or 30 cards a day that they're shipping out to people. Uh, they're trying to keep it small at the moment to make sure that all the systems work and talk to each other. And they're all in the EU because they're all built on the same banking platform that everyone can use. The initial limits will be 50,000 euros per year of turnover on the card, but they're already working to the next stage of ramping it up to 100,000 to 150,000 euros. So 50,000 euros is about 75,000 US uh, AUD. Just depends on what the exchange rate is on the day, but I'll be happy if it turns up and works. The smart chain is a process that runs on the blockchain. Now, do we care? As users, no, nah, don't care. Just want the thing to work. But the smart chain is the process that will run our AU4U tokens. So we will build these tokens and it will run on that smart chain. So there's no human intervention. When you run a transaction, when you send coins to somebody, it will happen automatically. There is no period where you think, I've got to wait for someone to click a button, approve it, or anything. It happens on the blockchain, and it's called a smart chain because it's got smarts built into it. The Zenex swap exchange, that's the simple exchange where you can just swap coins tokens from one to the other in a pair. That will be ready to go very, very soon. It will be open in the second quarter. So they're just working out what the best trading pairs are to put in and the liquidity issues, et cetera, et cetera. The technical business stuff that goes on behind the front end that we see as users. The Zenik Exchange, the real full-blown cheapest one in the world, et cetera, that is attached directly to the tablet. If you've bought a hub with a tablet, your tablet will be directly connected to that exchange. And this is the exchange that our coin holders will earn revenue from. So if you own 
and holds the net coins, you will get paid your share of the revenue from the exchange. But uh, it will release sometime this year, the beta exchange. And that will be, that will be a great thing because I really can't wait to see that. And I think we're going to attract a lot of people. For example, our AU4U token will be what they call a stable coin. Traders of cryptocurrency, when they want to take a weekend off, they want to move their assets into a stable coin so they know when they come back Monday morning that the same amount of liquidity is there or money. And that's what a stable coin does. So we will make sure that we um, are right there on that exchange when it opens, I, I'm hoping we should be able to do that. So the tokenization projects. Now, remember that Zanik built this blockchain to tokenize assets. That's what it's designed for. And they've talked about hundreds of companies that are already organized to come on board. Well, they've selected the first eight and they are working on that right now. Now, here's the thing. And this is what got me when I first looked at Zanik and finally got Boris to explain to me what they were trying to do. Zanik has built a business before they built the blockchain and the coin. The business model is these asset partners are going to bring their business model onto the blockchain. Now, the first eight they've selected have around about a million users each. Think about that. There's somewhere between 400, 500,000 users in the Zanik Sophia system today. In the next few months, they're going to add 8 million users. Yeah, let that think in. Think in. <laughs> think in. Let that sink in. I got a bit excited there. Had a th mixed up with my sir. And that will impact everything that we do because our physical Zanik hubs are the masternodes on the blockchain. 8 million users are going to create a lot of transactions. They need the hubs. They're delivering the first of the actual tablets this week. And you'll be able to, I hope, if you've ordered one already, uh, set yourself up in a process where you can even pick the colors. I've got no idea what the options are going to be. I'll be just happy to get the thing. Don't care if they give me an option to change the color because it's not like I'm going to carry it around and use it as a uh, tablet to send emails. Yeah, it, it is very cool, Martin. I think we're going to see a lot of changes in this system as, as these tablets arrive. The first one is they've decided to... Uh, allow updates to the software in a way that, for example, if I decide I want to buy Martin's hub because he wants to go fishing in Vanuatu for the rest of his life and I buy it off him, at the moment, the way the system is designed, the hub that I buy off Martin will always have Martin's account on it. But if I buy it and want to attach it to my account, at the moment, I can't do it. But in the coming weeks, they will have a process where I can do that. I can register and get that tablet to work on my account, not Martin's. And that's pretty cool, I think. That then brings us to the point of, how far are they going to take that? Will it mean I can have three accounts that I can log out of and come back in on a different account? I don't know. I don't talk to those developers. So I'm hoping that they've opened it up a bit. We'll see what happens. So they're putting together also as a, as a result of those thoughts, a programmer event in Playa del Carmen in Mexico. A lot of software companies do this. They give out a bunch of prizes, like substantial prizes. Um, we ran one uh, before, no, just after 2000. We were creating security software, so we published a 
list of pieces of software that we had secured and offered a million dollar prize to the person that could hack it. And it was never claimed. Nobody ended up happening, hacking it. So these guys are doing the same thing. They're asking them to come together, show their skills, win some prize money, substantial amounts of cash. And they then get to pick through all those people and see who they might want to hire as part of the development team. It's a great way to do it. The Avanoc incentive. So there's two running at the moment. They're adding tokens uh, to people that buy a hub now, I think, get a handful of Avanoc tokens. And there's a couple other ways you can earn them. Compliance overview. Be careful what you say to people. Uh, we have run afoul of this in other businesses before. Make sure that what you're talking about is what the company says is true. Don't get in a Facebook group and spout off what some idiot in Argentina or some idiot in New Zealand or some idiot in Alice Springs has misinterpreted and verbalised out there. Make sure that what you're talking about is what the company has endorsed. And believe me, there's enough good stuff happening that you don't need to do that. Also, the staking is coming along. We should see that actually operational this month. So that if you want to turn your Avanoc tokens, and this will come with all the other tokens as well, you will have the opportunity to turn tokens that you own into an income stream. And it's a great way to do it. So yet another reason why you do not need to be a salesperson to make money with us. It's a unique wallet. Comes from Zenik Safir, and it's going to let you regain control of your own finances. If you have a hub, you will actually have one of these devices, and it will mint coins for you for a long time. A long time. How secure is it? Is something else we want to talk about. The Hub will link directly to the exchange, so you can use cash and cryptocurrencies as you wish. You can put them into a public wallet and spend it with your phone. Then there's an offline wallet. It is firewalled from the internet. I had someone send me a link to a story today or yesterday about someone that had an offline wallet and it got hacked. And the only way it can happen is if they gave away the 24-word key now, the guy maintains he didn't ever do that. I don't know how it could possibly have happened for this poor bugger, but it is what it is. I mean, it's only as secure as if you, you have the key in your pocket, you need to make sure you keep it private. And I've reviewed how they're going to build these things with that offline key, and I cannot see how someone can hack into that. I, I can't say it's 100% impossible, but I've been around some very devious individuals in my life that showed me a lot of tricks with software. And I can't see how you can do that with this tablet, with that private wallet on it. But we'll learn more as time goes along. What now? Well, we're in the right place to benefit from the economic mess. It's free to add a wallet. You can start minting coins at 100 euros. Just stay focused on gold and silver. If you want more coins, when they go on the exchanges, you can just buy them or you can purchase a share of a hub or a full hub. They mint free coins for you. These can be sold or saved depending on your wishes. Now, think about uh, what that means. I think I've got... I'm going to pick a number and say just over 300 coins in my system that my hub has generated. What if those coins in the next couple of years go to $1,000 or even $100? That's a pretty good outcome. And if it surpasses Ethereum, they're what about 2,500 at the moment. 
yep, 300 of them would be really nice. I'm very happy with what it's done. We're a group of like-minded people focused on ensuring we survive. The world is changing. You've got to pay attention, folks. Uh, we are in the right place. We're going down the right road. So let's have a look at some news videos that are out there. This guy on Kitco News is predicting $2,400 gold in the next few months. $2,400 US dollars an ounce and $200 oil. So again, folks, these links will be in the description on the YouTube channel. How much silver is in a missile? This was a, a discussion about the impact of the war on silver. And I found this just after I had started to do my own research. And that was where I got the 15 kilo number from. Wow. This guy is blunt. He said, NATO has potentially warned of a wider conflict and the US Federal Reserve is warning of food and energy shortages. Let me say that again, food and energy shortages. Now, we just saw that here in Brisbane with a flood. I went into a Woolworths a few days ago and there were just meters of empty shelves. There was nothing. And that was because they had been unable to get a delivery in a few days. That's what they're predicting will happen in multiple countries. This guy is talking about, uh, this is on uh, research, what's Stansbury Research. They're talking about $3,000 an ounce USD of gold. Carbon credits set to explode 20-fold by 2030. Carbon credits, remember, that's what Avanoc does. You buy parts of the rainforest as your carbon credits. Explode by 20-fold. That'll be interesting if that happens to Avanoc, won't it? And here's our main man, Florian Heiser in Brisbane, talking about how is it possible that groceries have, in his words, skyrocketed and the inflation rate supposedly was only 3.4%. It's ridiculous. Yep, we've already deduced that. Just watch this space. So we are bringing this to you. We've worked really hard to make sure um, that we get as much information out to you as possible. And yes, Stephen, Avanoc is the flight system. And there's a number of tokens coming along that will that we'll do more than that. Everything we've ever talked about is in fact coming true. The bottom line is it's unlikely to ever go back to what we were a few years ago. And I'm sorry, Doug, I didn't manage to get anything in about the quals Tonight, I just ran out of time. It's 8.27 and we haven't even got finished. This is, you know, be your own bank. You don't need to do anything other than look after yourself in this business and you will make money. Hold and use money in spendable assets so you can protect yourself. So thanks for coming, everybody. I'm sorry we went a bit longer than normal. Uh, if you'd like to ask questions, I'm very happy to answer any questions. Uh, just make sure that we understand everything is changing and it's now changing rapidly in, in, in a big way. Yes, Stephen. Um, I've got a quick one. Uh, yep. With um, uh, Easy Shopping Cards being down yep. at the moment. Um, Just the is, Woolworths one is down. Oh, good. Okay. So I can still buy gold through with my credit yep. card through ESC. Okay, yep. cool. Thanks. All still works. The only thing that's offline at the moment is the Woolworths one because they're changing the supplier of the codes that become the digits on the gift cards. And, of course, everybody in that chain of supply has to make test and make sure that the systems work. And we're at the, we're at the back end of that system, so we've got to wait in line. Any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? Put your hand up, unmute, shout loudly or not. Hope everyone has enjoyed tonight. I 
literally I had a heap more information that I wanted to put in, uh, just got too much. I'm going to send an email out in the coming 48 hours about claiming for MTI. If you had an MTI account, there is now a process you can claim with. And it doesn't cost anything. You just fill out the details and you're in the claim process. Thanks, Vivian. Um, yes, affected by the floods. Yeah, we've still got family members in the house with high pressure hoses, cleaning down mud walls and, oh, yeah, poor buggers. Uh, if you've got a gyp rock wall and it's got five foot of water across it, half of that wall's got to go. In fact, most of it might be easier to do the whole lot. So thanks, everybody, for joining us. Really enjoy it when we get new information and we've had a heap of it tonight. We look forward to seeing you all on the golden beaches of the world. Have a great night. <laughs>